right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, happy Thanksgiving week to all of you. Uh, <laughs> Let's hope that it goes off a little easier than it was uh, the this morning in my other class and my kids needed me a bunch. So they're off on break. And uh, if you have kids, they're probably off on break too. So it's just part of it. Um, that being said, I have a couple announcements. This will go up on the announcements in Canvas in just a little bit, but a couple things about this week. Uh, number one, I've decided that we're not going to have a live lecture on Wednesday. So we won't have a live lecture. There'll be no new uh, topics covered on Wednesday. Um, and I think that's actually a good thing because this is your last real big catch up day. So at the end of this week, at the end of Wednesday, ideally, but at the end of this week, you should have all four of your renderings or at least a placeholder for all four of your renderings. That means an exterior day rendering, an exterior night rendering, an interior night rendering, and an interior day rendering. So you should, you should have all four of those, minimum a placeholder. So even if it's not quite right or you want to tweak settings, you should have all four of those. The last thing that you want to do is cut the final and be missing one of the renderings because it's a whole lot better to get half credit or three quarter credit on one of the renderings than to not have it at all. So we want to make sure all four of those are done. So I'm asking, please, please, please get your work caught up. Get ready. Make sure you have all four of those renderings going into the last week of class. When we get back after the break, that'll be our last full week of class, and we're going to do two more line drawings. We'll do the plan line drawing, and we'll do the section line drawing. Today, we're going to work on the elevation line drawing. Um, and so, again, it helps the more complete your model is when we do these line drawings. So um, the plan and the section obviously involve a more complete model. Therefore, that's all part of the push that I'm going for. OK, so the other part of this is that there will not be any mandatory check ins this week. So I'm not taking attendance in the check ins, but I'm obviously I'm here if you need help um, today. I have unfortunately a shortened check in period. I have to end today at one because I have something else I have to go do. Um, so we have a slightly shortened check in today. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'll have my normal check in time. So we won't have the live lecture. So I won't go from uh, 1120 to 1215 or so. Instead, we will have just a check in from 12 uh, to 210. So we'll have two, two hours and 10 minutes of check-in on Wednesday. Um, that's optional. If you need help, um, you know, that's, uh, I'll be here to, to give you help, et cetera. Okay. So those are two kind of critical announcements about the schedule. Remember, it's all about getting those four renderings done. That's really what I want by the end of this week. Today, we are going to go through creating uh, our first of three line drawings. Remember, as part of our um, final for this class, you're going to be giving me two of the line drawings, two of the three. So we'll do all three in class as exercises. You'll pick the best two and you'll turn those in as part of your final. So I'm going to go ahead and get Rhino set up here, and then we'll start talking about creating a building elevation. And really what this is fundamentally about is it's you've spent all this time building and creating a wonderful 3D model how do we accurately get high quality images out that are not renderings, but are instead line drawings? So how do we create a line drawing? Even better, how do we create a line drawing that's at a particular scale that comes out of Rhino? So we don't have to redraw it. We don't have to recreate the elevation. If we already have it, why can't we use it to our advantage? I'm gonna go ahead and open up my master site. And once again, I have, it's always a good idea to uh, remind you, but I've gone ahead and I've chosen to keep all of my files locally on this machine. So I right click and say, always keep on this device. I did that with my materials. I did that with my block references. Those are important. I also obviously am logged into OneDrive and I have the caffeine app running and I could say, I want it to be active for eight hours. And then let's go ahead and open up my ocean file. Maybe. And there we are. So the first thing that I want to sort through is what elevation view do I want to have? You know, for me, I think this is probably my strongest elevation. I could do this as an elevation, but I think it's less strong. 
So I'd probably end up picking this as my elevation view. Now this ends up being a little bit easy because I can just go into my views here and I can choose the front, back, left, or right. I think this is the back view. Oh, no, it would be the front view. And I can get myself into an elevation view of this particular building. Now, where it gets a little bit trickier is if you have a hill that's in front of your building. So for example, if I went back to, um, let's go into that back view. If I wanted to do this elevation, right? I have this hillside that's in front of my building and I would need to, to basically clip that to get rid of that part of the, the, uh, the hillside in order to create this elevation view. Um, you can do that with a big section plane like we did before. Um, and in the interest, I'm gonna do the other one, but in the interest of showing you this, just in case you run into this, I'm gonna go ahead and create it for you just so that you can see it. So I need a really large vertical plane so we'll go ahead and create a vertical plane. I'm going to hold down shift there to make sure that it's in a line. And then I need it to be larger than my whole model. Let me move it down. So it completely slices through the model. And then in this view, what I need to do is I need to move it so that it's adjacent to my building. And what I'm really looking for is to get it really close up to the building, right about like that. And then I can use that as a split. So we'll take the terrain and we'll split it with that vertical plane that I just created. And that will allow me to take this piece of material that's in my way, and I can actually just hide it. Likewise, I can hide this. And then when we come in here to look at my building, we can see where that, that line would be. I may have to go a little bit closer. I may actually have to hide it a little bit further in. Let me show this. Let me move my plane because of the configuration of my building. I might have to move this just a little bit closer like that and do one more split with this plane. And then I could hide this piece of mountain and this piece of mountain like that. If I had this big surface, there we go. Now we're seeing this, that's a lot better as the back elevation. So if I was doing that back elevation, you could see how I could um, basically create that bit of my building. Okay. So again, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go back to show and then I'm gonna switch over into the front view. So let's go to set view and then front. And I wanna make sure that big plane is hidden. So we'll go to hide and there we are in my front view. So as I start to set this up, I wanna make sure that my, my view is the way I want it. So I might go to pan, I might adjust, I might zoom in a little bit depending on what, what the view looks like. Once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and resave this view. So I'm gonna to come to the little flyout menu here and I'm gonna go down to set view, named views. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. And instead of one of my rendered views, this is going to be my, um, what would this be? West elevation. Actually, I think this might be my South elevation. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I could just call it elevation. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And that then is a nice saved view for me. What I need to know is I need to know the outer extents of this window. And I'm going to do that by showing, let's, let's look at all of my views at once. And I'm actually going to change this so that this looks a little bit easier. I'm going to go to set view and I'm going to go to perspective over here. So normally this is my top view, but I'm going to have two perspective views. I have my elevation. I'm going to use this as my perspective view here. And in this south elevation, I'm going to go to set camera, show camera. And so now in this view, or excuse me, in this view, I'm seeing the camera of this. So I can actually create a, a box that goes around the outside of my view by 
using these little points. So those camera points. I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle. And instead of a normal rectangle, I'm actually going to create it as uh, this one, which is a three point rectangle. I'm gonna turn on my midpoint snap, or excuse me, my point snap, and I'll snap one, two, and three. Now this rectangle that I just created is exactly a quarter of the overall view. So there you can see it right there. If we scale this from this corner by two, so if I type scale, it's just a regular scale, I choose that corner as my base point, and then I type two, it will then represent the entire south elevation view. So there it is. So I've created that. So your, your logical question is, why did I go through that effort? Well, we're going to use a command, and we're going to use it several times today, and we'll use it again in um, the next two weeks of lectures, so or the next week of lectures. Uh, we're going to create a two-dimensional line drawing from this view. And we do that using a command called make2d. So I'll type in make2d. And when I choose make2d, it's going to ask me to select objects to draw. I'm going to go ahead and choose all. And I'll hit enter. There's all my objects. And then when I go ahead and hit enter one more time, it's going to present me with a dialog box with options. So what I'm doing here is I want to project the view. And then down here, I have the option to turn on things like hidden lines or not. I'm going to leave the hidden lines off right now on this first one because sometimes they get a little bit complicated. It's going to make a layer called make 2D. And then I'll go ahead and say, OK. Now, this process can take a little bit of time. So we'll let it run. All right. And what it does is if I were to switch over into the top view, so let's go back out of the perspective view. Let me go into my uh, set view and then top here. We will see the elevation at zero, zero right here. There it is. There's my elevation view. There's the rectangle that represents my viewport and there's my whole drawing. Now, in this case, I didn't choose the hidden lines. I'm going to go back and choose the hidden lines just so you can see the difference. So let me go ahead and delete this. And we'll do that process one more time. It doesn't hurt for you to see it anyway. So there we are in our view. I'll type make 2D. It's also available under curve, curve from objects, make 2D, maybe not. I thought it was there. I'll have to find it. Uh, it's make 2D, select objects to draw, all. I'll hit enter. Selected all the objects. I'll go ahead and hit enter again. And here's my dialog box. This time I'm going to choose the hidden lines. Perfect. And it will again be called make 2D. The rest of these are all fine. Um, we can, I should also point out this object properties. Uh, we can maintain our source layers or we can create two new layers. Um, there is a fine tuning that can happen in Illustrator if we maintain our source layers. It's much easier though, if you just use it from uh, input objects. So we'll leave it there for right now and I'll go ahead and say, okay. And this one will probably take a little bit longer to, to perform because it's calculating all the hidden objects. If it ends up crashing on you, one of the strategies is to remove the blocks that are like furniture from your building because it's calculating all the hidden lines for that. Okay, so now we can switch over into the top view and there we can see it. Now this one included all of my objects in it as well, which can be really nice. And again, there is my view. It does output some objects that are outside of my view and I could actually go in and just trim those out. So I can type in trim and we can get rid of some of those extra objects.
maybe. I'm going to hit escape for a second and cancel out of that. Maybe. Okay, and then I'll come in and I'm just going to select the drawing itself right there. Uh, oh, and it did actually trim those out. Let's use that as a trim. And then let me try to trim some of these other pieces. And I'm almost there. Okay. So there we are. And now what I can do is I can actually select all of this and I can export this to uh, Illustrator. Looks like it's not quite selecting all of my lines, so let's make sure that we're selecting the other parts of the lines here. It looks like some things were grouped, and that was part of the problem. So yeah, let me ungroup, and let's try this again. There we go. Now I've got the whole object. So once I have that selected, we're going to export this to Illustrator. So I'll go to File, Export Selected. And unlike our AutoCAD exports, this time we're going to choose an Adobe Illustrator file, a .ai. And then we're going to click on the options here. And this is where we have the ability to preserve scale. So if you guys have worked in 135, for example, and we did the Photoshop collages, you remember that we lost scale when we did that. This is the ability to preserve the scale and we can use that to our advantage. So I'm gonna go ahead and preserve the scale. I'm gonna say 48 inches is equal to one inch. This is our model scale. That means it's gonna be quarter inch equals to foot. The rest of these settings are all okay. So I'll say, okay. And then let's get it on my flash drive or excuse me, on my OneDrive. That was not the correct folder. And here we are. I'm going to create a new folder called Elevation. And I will call this my uh, South Elevation. And then we'll go ahead and click on Save. It will bring up the dialog box one more time. It's 48 to 1. We'll go ahead and say OK. And that then outputs this Make 2D file. And you'll see over here in our layers that we have a Make 2D, and we have a visible layer, and we have a hidden layer. Those will come through into Illustrator as well. So now that I have those two, let's take a look at those in Illustrator. So I need to go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator. And I recognize that not all of you have done anything in Illustrator before, and that's okay. There's a few basic steps that we're going to go through to create these outputs. And if um, you end up not doing too much, we'll still get a good end result. I'm going to walk you through just the bare minimum. If you're familiar with Illustrator and you want to do a little bit extra, there's nothing wrong with doing a little bit of extra either. Okay, so let me close that. It's kind of like if you use Photoshop to enhance your renderings. There's nothing wrong with doing a little bit of Photoshop, but it's not a required part of the class. I'm going to go ahead and go to open, and I'll go into my folder here. Uh, and I can't pick the right folder today, can I? There we go. There's my South Elevation. We'll go ahead and click on Open. And there is my drawing. So I can press uh, Control-0 to see the whole screen, or I can press Control-minus to zoom out a little bit. And we can see that I have a white piece of paper, and my drawing doesn't quite line up on that white piece of paper. I can fix that using the Artboard tool, which is right over here on the left side. When I click on it, I can then adjust the piece of paper to match up to the viewport that I just exported. And there, oops.
and there it is. Okay, so now that I have that, we can again press Control Zero, and it's time to do a little bit of modification. You can see that some of the layer, some of the objects have some colors on them. So let's look at our layers. We have a hidden and a visible layer. The visible should be on top of the hidden layer, right like that. And let's start with the hidden. Now in Illustrator, the easy way of selecting all the objects is to look at the layer and then click right next to the circle. So I'll click right here. And when I do that, I get a little box. And that represents all of the objects on that layer. Then I'll go ahead and go to properties and we'll edit some properties. So the stroke, this is the line thickness. We're gonna drop it to 0.25. Right next to that, we have the ability to change the color. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the color. Oops, single click on the color. And it would be nice if we had a value here. Um, let's just do it in maybe a 75% gray right now. And there it is. Now it has a gray color to it. And lastly, I'd like to have them become dotted lines. And I'll do that by clicking on the stroke little icon here. And I'll turn on dashed line. I hope. No, this just goes to show you that it happens to me too. I'll give it a minute or two here. And there we go. And my dash line, oops. Uh oh. I wasn't patient and I unchecked it. So let's let it go one more time. Oh, there we go. And I want to change it to be two points and two points. So I'll do two point and then the gap right next to it. Will also be two points. And I'm sorry that this is so slow. It's from the density of the couch, I think. There we go. And we'll do this one at two point as well. Perfect. So those are all at two points like that. Now it's time to go back to the visible lines, the ones that are on top. As soon as this is done, All right, so I've got that set. I'm gonna go back up to my layers. I'm gonna to go to the visible lines and I'll turn off the hidden lines to make this a little bit easier. These are the visible lines here. We'll select all of those. There they are. I'm gonna go into my properties and let's drop the thickness down. It's probably 0.75 and my color needs to be black. So we'll switch that to black. Perfect. Now you've probably noticed that some of the lines are missing and need some refinement. So that's a matter of switching lines. So let's go ahead and turn them back on. So I have my hidden lines visible and my other lines. There we go. Now we can see the dotted lines. And now I would go in and I would make some modifications. So some of these lines can just be deleted altogether. So let's look here. This would need to be thicker. 
And one of the advantages of Illustrator is we can actually use, when we select a line, we can use this eyedropper tool to pick one of the other lines and it will then match that other line, which is helpful. So you can see that that thickened up there like that. So let me zoom in, I'll press control plus, and it would be a matter of you know, tweaking remaining settings. So this line, for example, this line, we would need to match that. And you may find that it's even easier to select groups of lines. So we might select this. I might select this. Those look okay. All of that looks okay. And then I would go into my match properties and I'd match it to that. And then, like I said, we may need to make some modifications. Some of these, like these, these larger lines here, you know, realistically, they should be deleted. That could just be deleted. That could just be deleted. That could be deleted. That one could be deleted. Oops, no. That one, we want to match the hidden right there. So you would go through and kind of fine tune the object. It does take a little bit of effort um, to go through and do this, but ultimately, if you worked your way through it, you'd end up with a very nice um, line drawing of your model. So it does take a little bit of fine tuning, and I could sit here and keep, keep tweaking settings and, and whatever to get it set right. But you can see that rather quickly, we can end up with a really reasonably nice line drawing. So let's get rid of that little piece. That little piece somehow didn't get broken. Uh, this is a little bit more of an advanced topic, um, so it's it's beyond what I would have what I would expect for students, but that haven't taken one thirty five. But I can actually get rid of um, this line here by splitting it. There we go, and then we could adjust that one just a little bit till it comes over to like that. That's kind of that horizon line. This one could probably be deleted altogether. All right, press control zero, and we can kind of zoom back and see, you know, some of these other lines should probably go away like that. As you can see, I'm just kind of fine tuning my drawings. Some of these lines down here, they don't matter. They can all go away. This part over here can go away. And so essentially that's what I'm starting to do. I'm tweaking my drawings and getting rid of the parts that don't matter like that so that they can start to show a little bit better like that. Okay. So once this is done and set, you know, I've got a few more pieces over here. It would be nice to use a little bit of a toned background for this so that we could kind of see the shadowing on our building a little bit better. Now, of course, we could use a full rendered version. Right, I could come back here. Let me go into my south elevation view right there. And I could go ahead and I could render it out completely. But sometimes that's not exactly what we want to see. The easiest method to get kind of a color toned image for the background is actually to switch into one of these other modes. I think the Arctic works particularly well because it gives us some background there. Now, with this Arctic, it is showing some of these other lines that I don't really want to see. So I'm going to go in and modify that view setting. So I'm going to go to Tools and then Options. And the last one under View, I can look at Display Modes, and I can find Arctic. And I can choose in this Arctic to turn off... Uh, the curves. Let's go back here. Shade objects. Here we go. Visibility. We'll show, turn off the tangent edges. We'll turn off the tangent seams. We'll turn off the curves. Uh, I'm going to turn off a few more of these. All right, good. Now, the only thing that's left that I'm seeing is that fur on that, that particular surface there. 
So that may be something that I have to, to go in and modify. Oh, looks like it didn't quite take. Let's go to options. Go back to my view here. Display modes. Sorry. Arctic. Turn off all of this. And I wish I knew where. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And then I may just have to delete the fur. So let's go into my current renderer. Let's change it to V-Ray for Rhino. Let's go here. There's my asset editor. There's my geometry. There's my fur. Uh, select objects in the scene. Can we hide it? Nope, it's going to show the whole thing. So let's not hide it. Uh, in this case, I would probably just delete it. And there it is. All right, a little bit better. So this gives us that kind of colorized version of what we're doing. So I could go ahead and I could export this, and I can do that by just capturing it. So I'll click the little down arrow, and I'll go to uh, Capture to File. There's my self elevation. Now, under resolution here, it's currently set to the viewport, but we can actually bump that value way up, right? So we can go custom and we can say, you know what? I want this to be 10,000, for example. And that's gonna make it much bigger. Um, I should have locked the viewport aspect ratio. So let's come back to viewport, go back to custom, lock the aspect ratio, and then we can go up to 10,000. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, this is then going to save a JPEG for me. So let's go into my OneDrive. Let's go into my folder for today. There we go. And we're going to put it in my elevations. And we'll go ahead and click on save. So that gives me this option. Another option would be to actually render this view out completely. And we could do that in full color. We could do it in night mode, or we could do it by overriding the materials. So let's go back to our shaded mode here. And if I were to render this out with my current settings on it, we can take a look at what would happen. So we'll go ahead and let that render here. And while that's happening in the background, I'm going to jump back over into Illustrator and show you the aligning process for this. So at this point, I can go up to File and then Place. And we can use that view capture that I just created, which is exactly the same size as the artboard in proportions. So let's zoom out. I'm going to control minus here, make that a little bit smaller. And then we actually need to shrink it down. We're going to hold down shift. Keep it in proportion. We'll hold down shift a little bit more. And this is the advantage of using this kind of a strategy is that when we get close, right there, we can line this up right in our artboard. So there it is right there. And I'm going to hold down space bar to pan a little bit. And I can then oops, shrink this back. Again, I'm holding down shift to maintain proportions. And there it is. And this is exactly the same as my drawings or my line drawings. But right now, it's competing with them. So I have two different options. I can put it on its own layer, which would be to create a new layer, drag this box up onto that layer, and move it below all of my objects. like that. Or my other option would be to take the image, go to properties, and to change the blending mode on it. And I can do that by going into opacity and changing right here. If you guys took 135 with me, you know that I'm a big fan of blending modes. I could go ahead and change the blending mode to multiply, thereby making the whites transparent. So in any case, that's our goal, is to end up with an image file like this with a little bit of underlay for our texture. 
So if I went back to um, control zero here, we could zoom out. There it is. And there's kind of my final elevation view with a little bit of texture behind, which is rather nice. Alternatively, I could use one of my renders. Let's see how that's coming. Right, this was my full color rendering. I could drop that behind my line drawing. I don't think that's going to turn out very well. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that, and I'll show you a different strategy. So again, this is set up for my daytime. I have my sun in the scene. And so what I'll do is I'll go into my V-Ray options, and down here at the bottom under settings, we have a material override. So I can actually turn on a material override, and I can override the material with, say, white or light gray. And when I do that, it's just overriding the color, or I could actually assign a material. So I could do a, a you know a porcelain white or something like that, and then we could render it out. And so that just took all the materials and overrid them with my building. Now it's not turning out that well because it's really, really bright. So I might have to adjust the exposure here as well. So let's go back here. Let's go to my settings. Let's go to camera. And let's up to maybe 17 or so. That looks a little bit dark. So let's do maybe 15.75. And so the advantage here is we're getting the shadows cast on the hillside that would be accurate to the sun settings that we have in our model. So we'll let this kind of finish its rendering here and fine tune it. Furthermore, all of my lights are installed on the scene. You can see it, those lights are, are showing as well. Perfect. Now that's finished. I can go ahead and save it. I only need the image itself. So I'm going to save it not as a PNG. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And we will put it in my uh, folder for elevations. There it is. And we'll call this rendered elevation. And we'll go ahead and click on save. And that then saves this view. Now, to me, this is still a little bit gray. We could do it, right? So I could drop it in here. So let's turn off that layer. And then let's go ahead and create a new layer. There we go. And then I can file place this new object. And that was my rendered elevation. And there it is. And I'm confused why it didn't render out the same aspect ratio like it should have. But the height still works, so we can just realign this. And it may take some arrow keys might help us align that. And there we are with the rendered view. Again, I'm not quite sure why I got a, a shorter or not as wide rendered view. Probably because I did uh, expand it to be the full size of the window. But to me, this is still a little bit gray. I don't like it as much. So I might do some post-processing in Photoshop. That's where Photoshop comes in uh, if we wanted to. Again, this is not something that I'm expecting people that have never taken 135 to do, but I like to show it as part of the process. So in that scenario, I could go ahead and open up. This rendered elevation.
And there we go. And I could go in to layer, new adjustment layer. I'm going to do a levels adjustment. And this will let me darken up the shadows a bit, lighten up the lights a bit, but I can also skew the overall tone. So I can make it much brighter like that if I wanted to. Furthermore, I could make it a true black and white. So I could go to layer, new adjustment layer. We'll do a channel mixer. Again, these are all things from 135. We could switch that over into true monochrome. So we're looking at it without the color and maybe that's what we like. So at this point we could go to file and then export, export as. We'll make it our highest quality. Maybe. Come on. Oh, nice. We'll see if it comes back. I'm going to switch over to Illustrator. I'm going to go ahead and do a save on this just in case. Let me go to file and then save. We'll go ahead and click on save. Let's see if Photoshop has come back for us. So nice. Well, we'll give that a little bit more time. The point is that this is just a modified version of the rendering because I think it looks a little bit better in black and white. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this particular view. I think I prefer this one better. Turn that one back on. I think I like that one a little bit better. So they're just, again, different options that you can play around with. So this is ultimately what we're looking for. We're looking for an elevation view that can stand and be one of the elevations that you show on a project. And the advantage here is that it's pretty quick and easy to create. After you get the strategy of it, you can go back to your Rhino and you can re-render over and over again. I think my rendering, by the way, didn't match my viewport. I think if I went to render output, yeah, it was set at 16 by nine instead of match viewport. That was my mistake. Um, and then I could increase that value up, uh, let's say 2000, just to increase it because it doesn't take that long to render it. So they're just little little subtle changes that you could create um, to, to go behind your building elevation view, okay? So the goal here, is to create the elevation view. This is what we want. When you're done with it, you'll go to file and then export and then export as, and you'll save a JPEG. So we'll come down here, we'll save a JPEG. And this would be our South Elevation final. And then we click export. <clears throat> Let's bump up the quality to maximum. Let's change the resolution to a minimum of 300. And then we'll go ahead and say, okay. And that then writes out this particular file. And I think this provides a nice kind of balance and backdrop, especially if you stand back from it and gives you a little bit of depth and shadow. Let me jump back into Photoshop and let's see if I can get that one to finish. No, nope, it's definitely crashed out on me. Um, so I won't come back and try to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the schedule one more time, just so you guys don't forget before I let you go for today. Uh, today, I'm gonna stick around only until one um, to deal with any uh, check-ins. Remember that the check-ins are not required this week, and that's because of the Thanksgiving week. So I'll be here till one to solve any problems you might have. And then on Wednesday, there will not be a live lecture um, like normal. So we're not gonna do the live lecture. That being said, I will still be available for my check-ins. That will happen between 12 and 2.10. So normal check-in schedule, it's the same Zoom link as always. Okay, and our goal, our big goal is to have all four of the renderings complete 
and I'm debating making it an actual exercise to force you to turn them in so that I know for sure that you have them all done. Um, and I might do that. So check back in a little bit and see if I add one in just so that you're forced into turning those four renderings in. I really, really want all four of those done at the end of this week. Okay, you can go back and you can improve them, you can change them, you can re-render them, you can bump up the quality, but I at least want a placeholder for all four of those renderings. So that's the uh, exterior day and night rendering and the interior day and night rendering. Okay, next week, we're going to do the plan views and we're going to do the section views. Those are the last two line drawings that we'll create. And with those two line drawings, you will pick two, or with those three line drawings, the one we did today, the one we do on next Monday, and the one we do on Wednesday, you'll pick two of those three to turn in as part of your uh, final for this class. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Remember, check-ins aren't mandatory, but I'll be here for the next hour to help um, any problems you might have.